I am Marissa. I am reviewing the Spring Box, and today I am featuring Donkey Milk Gel Sleeping Pack, which is one of my favorite products from Sabbatical Beauty. Um, it's just this amazing sleeping pack. There's like hardly any scent to it at all. It's a gel-like consistency. Um, it's great for all skin types, but especially good for my um, normal to oily skin. I also wear a lot of products, so if you're like me and really layer on and like do the whole like 10 plus step K-Beauty routine, then Donkey Milk is definitely a must because when you put it on, it dries to like this really matte film um, that prevents things from sticking to your face. So, you know, at night, I used to wear all of this uh, product on my face and it would be like kind of sticky or um, just like so thick from the um, the thick moisturizer I would use at night because your skin is drier at night so I use a thicker moisturizer and it would just all like rub off on my pillow or my hair would get stuck on my face and but with the the donkey milk gel sleeping pack it doesn't do that because of the way that it dries down to a matte finish it almost feels like um, I can't really describe it because it's not like paper and it's not like I guess the closest thing I could it's like, like rice paper. I don't know if you have all had um, white rabbit candy. They're kind of like vanilla Tootsie Rolls, but there's a layer of rice, clear rice paper that's wrapped around it. Um, a lot of people who don't, who eat white rabbit for the first time try to peel it off and say, oh, I'm just taking the paper off. But no, you eat it. It like dissolves on your tongue. Um, it's really cool. I'll have to show you guys sometime if you have never tried white rabbit candies. It's, it was my favorite candy growing up. Um, it's still one of my favorite candies. But anyway, it's like a rice paper, like a clear rice paper, and it's very smooth. It's like a really thin film, um, and it's uh, dry. It's matte, and it's very slick. You could just like glide your fingers over it without feeling any um, traction or stickiness um, just because it's um, just smooth I guess but yeah I like it because it um, really packs everything into your skin so because let me get a little bit out here so you can see it's like really jelly and when you apply it it is a little bit sticky at first I just love the way it feels too so here it is, and you can't really tell, but I didn't let it absorb all the way. Um, it's not going to. So a lot of people, when they're first trying this product, because they're so used to commercial products with all of the filler um, in it to make it like more consumer friendly. They're not used to textures like this. Um, but yeah, so at first it feels sticky and um, it's a little damp, a little moist. Um, but eventually it's gonna dry down, um, but it doesn't absorb. So you get all the benefits from the ingredients, but it doesn't all like just disappear into your skin. It acts as a protective layer or a shield, if you will, um, to the rest of the skincare that's doing its work underneath. And it prevents all of your creams and your serums from rubbing off on your pillow. Or if you're like me, I'm a drooler. <laughs> I would wake up and like pretty much everything I put on my face was drooled off. Um, but when I wake up in the morning, I can still feel the donkey milk film over my face. So I know that uh, my skincare stayed on and it was doing its work while I was asleep. So now as it starts to dry and I keep rubbing it, I don't know if you can see, but it, it'll pill a little bit. Like it'll start to pill and peel. See that? So when you're putting it on, you want to make sure that you spread it quickly and you get an even layer. Don't go back and try to spread it after a while because then it will start to peel off like that. So just a heads up, get the amount that you want. 
I like to do my face in quadrants. So I'll take a little bit, spread it on over here, done. Take a little bit, spread it on over here, done, here, done. Um, and that way you're not like constantly moving around all over your face and this part might have dried and you're over here trying to spread it out and then it starts to peel. That's something that I learned the first time I used it. After the second time I realized, okay, this is how it's working. This is what the texture is gonna be like. Um, I love it, it works so well. And it's one of my favorite products now. So let's go into the ingredients. My husband just got home. I don't think he knows I'm doing a live right now. Um, I can't read this. This is a label I can't read, guys. So let me go over to my computadora. All right, so the first ingredient in here is actually donkey milk extract, which is awesome because how many other products do you see that the active ingredient is the first ingredient? Um, none. Not until I started using Sabbatical Beauty did I see that. I didn't even think it was allowed. I used to think that active ingredients couldn't be the number one ingredient because of some sort of like um, pH imbalance or it was like too much for your skin and like we would just like implode or something. And Sabbatical Beauty's ingredients list just blew me away. Like I had no idea that donkey milk could be the first ingredient in something called donkey milk. I had no idea um, that, like, th that that was possible because I've never seen it before. Um, hi Gretchen. Um, it, it, it just blew me away. So um, donkey milk was probably the first sleeping pack that I tried and I used to wear it over rose and honey. Um, which of course is very sticky. So I just thought it was the most amazing thing that um, rose and honey, cause it would just like smear all over my pillow. Um, but then when I got donkey milk and put it on top of here and I woke up with like a completely dry face, um, it was amazing. And so I knew that this had to become a regular part of my night routine. Um, the second ingredient in it is rice bran oil, which we know is an amazing oil um, for moisture, and it also helps to even skin tone and brighten your skin. Um, coconut fruit extract is the next, and something called polyacrylate and a polyisobutene. I don't know what those are. I'm pretty sure they're necessary though, or else Adeline wouldn't put it in there. Adeline, if you could clarify for me what those do. Um, donkey milk powder is the next ingredient in there. Um, and then you have the base of the um, preservative and preservative booster, the garlic, ginger, and wasabi base. So, okay, so Adeline's saying that Okay, the ingredients I just said, the polyisobutene and the polysorbate is what makes it a cream. So basically, um, when Adeline has these amazing ideas um, to use incredible ingredients, it's, if you think of it this way, it all starts as a serum because serums are the most potent form of the ingredient you could get. You, that, like, if that's what you want, a serum is like a shot to your skin of that active. But in order to make it a cream, you need other ingredients um, mixed in there so that you get a texture like this and you have a moisturizer. So that is the only reason why Adeline would put anything else in there that is not an active ingredient, is to make it a texture like a cream or a sleeping pack. Um, I'm going to go on and take down a competitor's product for you guys today because donkey milk has been blowing up for the past maybe year, year and a half um, in the K-beauty world. And the ingredients list are pretty appalling. I wanted to do one... Um, the ingredients list was just like ugh, miles long and then Adeline found another one that was more expensive 
and had even worse ingredients than the one that I picked out. The one I picked out was like $35 and um, it was horrible. But the one I'm taking down is $55 and the ingredients list is longer and worse than the one I had originally chosen. I'm gonna go on and post the link in the comments now if you guys wanna follow along. Okay, so I posted the link for Donkey Milk 3D Moisture Cream. And thumbs up if you guys get there. Ding ding, here we go. Ingredients list is all of this plus this. First, I'm going to read to you the description because it does sound pretty appealing. What it is. Milk does a body good, but donkey milk does a face even better. Fat with donkey milk, collagen, and lipids in this intensive rejuvenating cream hydrates and nourishes dry and damaged skin. Adios, acne marks, wrinkles, dark spots, and uneven tone, which this does actually for real in real life, by the way. Um, the beneficial ingredients are supposed to be niacinamide, donkey milk, centella asiatica extract, which is, um, Hayne talked about it in her live the other day about how it's um, a cure-all, kind of like um, it's an ingredient in the Korean equivalent to neosporin. Um, and some other things that I don't know. And honey. First ingredient is... Let's all say it together. Who thinks they know what the first ingredient is? One, two, three. H2O. Yes, water is the first ingredient, and I'm not surprised. Um, whenever water is the first ingredient in a cream, right away alarms should go off, and you should back away from the product and look for something else. Um, water. The next is butylene glycol, which is a cheap... Um, humectant. Cetyl ethyl hex, cetyl ethyl hexanoate. Don't know what that is. Adeline, what is that? Um, cyclopentas, cyclopentasiloxane. That sounds Aztec. Cyclopentasiloxane. <laughs> and after that is caprylic Capric triglyceride. Okay, I know what triglycerides are. I don't know what that stuff before it is. Finally, we get to niacinamide, which is one of the key ingredients. And it took one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the seventh ingredient. Um, and that's one of the beneficial ingredients. And it's not even donkey. Um, I want to see... Okay, so finally we get to donkey milk after glyceric stearate. I'm not sure what that is, but it is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, <coughs> excuse me, it's the 11th ingredient, and I need some water, I'll be right back. It is the 11th ingredient in the ingredients list. Adeline, I don't even think yours has 11 ingredients. So finally we get to donkey milk and then we have licorice root extract and all these other extracts that make it look fancy but really you don't need it. Panthenol, shea butter, I just don't understand why there's so much stuff in here. I mean, wow, honey is the last ingredient. So honey is one of the beneficial key ingredients, and it is the very last ingredient on here. That's just insane. Um, <clears throat> it's for a 50-gram jar. Adeline's saying, also niacinamide, 
um, max formulated recommendation is 5%. So if niacinamide is all the way up here, it is the, I think I said eighth, one, two, three, seventh. It's the seventh ingredient up here. If that can't be any more than 5% of the formula, then what the hell? <laughs> How much donkey milk is in here? Jeez. I just don't understand. If Adeline can create a quality product in sturdy packaging with a nice, clean website and can afford to pay all of her employees livable wages and only charge $75 for a full size of this donkey milk sleeping pack. Why can't everyone else, do, why can't a multi-million dollar company do that? And the only thing that sets alarms off in my head is greed. Just plain and simple, it's greed. And what I don't understand even further is that I'm sure many of you here have encountered this, is when you tell your friends about um, sabbatical beauty and you make the comparisons and you even show them the ingredients list, like it's right there in front of their face and you compare it to something else they're using and they still say, no, I'm good. I like what I'm using. That blows my mind even more. Like, why? Because of the name brand? Because it's popular? Because it's trending? Because you want what everybody else has? Because you can get it at Sephora um, or Ulta or the drugstore? Or is it because you just have this brand loyalty without reasoning like to a crappy brand that doesn't care about you or your business? Because let me tell you, they're a multi-million dollar company they could care less whether you keep buying their product or not. You're just one person to them. And Adeline knows each and every one of you. And we all know each other. And we care about each other. And we help each other. And I, I just don't understand. I don't understand. And it just it blows my mind. Okay, I'm going to go to questions now. Um, let's go back, go back. Amy says, cetyl ethyl hexanoate is a synthetic ester of cetyl, cetyl alcohol and comes in the form of a pale yellow wax. It works as an emollient. It's a skin conditioner and a thickening agent. Okay, so yeah, we don't really need that. Um, Gretchen said, I'm just buying SB. I can't handle all these big words and ingredients. It's all scary and terrifying. It is. There's so much. Because you don't, you want to know what you're putting in your face. Like I said before, your skin, like, is the fastest way to your bloodstream. Like, aside from shooting things up your veins, if you put something on your skin, it absorbs into your bloodstream like that. Um, let's see. K, uh, no. Wait, I just missed. I saw Hain. Okay, Hain says, I have a general question on ingredients lists. I'm still a newbie when it comes to reading ingredients. Is it industry understood to put most ingredients down to the least used ingredients? Yes. So, ingredients have to be listed from the most to the least used in the recipe. Gretchen says, I laugh when I go to Ulta. I just shake my head. I don't have to get any of it. Ha 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 Did I do your laugh right? I'm the same way. I laugh even harder at the people who try to sell me things. Which is kind of mean, I know. But I can't help it. Be especially when their sales pitch isn't so great. Because I used to be that person um, who had to approach people. And I'm just like, I've been there. You can't sell me anything, really. Um... Ah, oh, those you guys. Too many comments so fast. Okay, Casey says, that's my mom. She's been using Rodan and Field System. I don't know how much it costs, but I can't see a difference, and she's been using it for about six months. Okay, so you're replying to that in regards to the telling people about sabbatical beauty and them being stubborn and still sticking to the things that don't work. I, I don't understand it. I really don't. Um, 
Adeline says, all those reasons also is why brands can charge so much. They spend so much on marketing and wholesaling to places like Sephora. Yes, um, marketing. Okay, think about this. Tell your friends this. The next time you show them sabbatical beauty and they stick with their popular brand item, tell them this. You know, <laughs> most of the money that you're paying for that product goes to marketing. So you're basically paying them to sell you the thing that you just bought. Yeah, you're paying them to sell to you. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> um, most of Sabbatical Beauty, I mean, Sabbatical Beauty has a tiny, tiny um, advertising budget. Most of the clientele we get is through word of mouth. And I think that's the way that it should be because it's tried and true customers um, talking about products that actually work. Uh, Amy says, hey, and it's the law. The ingredients must be listed in descending order of predominance. However, there are a few exceptions to this requirement. That is a lot to read. I will probably post that <laughs> in the description when um, I post it onto YouTube. Um, but thank you, Amy, for all of that information. Elizabeth says, hi, Marissa. I'm super new and never tried SB, so you... So thank you for this video. You're welcome. I love doing these. I love talking about skincare and I love the brand because everything is amazing and it works and I love Adeline and all of you too. Um, see, Gretchen says, what? You are freaking me out, Marissa. Stuff in your face goes into your blood. Only thing faster <laughs> shooting up. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you got to be careful. It's like you what you eat and what you put on your skin, it's all the same. If you wouldn't eat it, don't put it into your skin. Plain and simple. That's a rule that I've lived by for a while now, um, especially since finding sabbatical beauty because I don't have to compromise anymore. Um, Adeline says, I heard the same for Korean brands. I think she's getting the list from USK Beauty Retailer. Yes, I am getting... Um, the list from a U.S. retailer. They do sell in Korea, too. They're, they were a Korean retailer, um, and then they uh, have a warehouse in San Francisco as well. Tara says, we need SB shampoos and conditioners. Actually, Tara, cabin fever can be used in your hair. I actually tried it in my hair, um, and I liked it. My hair actually came out squeaky clean. And it wasn't drying at all because um, I have really over-processed hair. And um, so I feel like I have to use these like super expensive shampoos that condition and have the keratin and all that. But I used, I wanted to try Cabin Fever in my hair and it was really gentle, but it still got my hair really clean. So you um, should try it out. Amy says products sold in the U.S. have to adhere to the FDA regulation on labeling things in order or most in the formula to least in the formula. Korea has different laws. I was not aware of that. I need to look into that. Word of mouth is best advertising. Yes, it is. Um... Mm -hmm. I think I'm finally caught up. Cabin fever, cabin fever. Okay, so Adeline says cabin fever works because it's pH 5.5, which is close to skin, plus hair pH, so it won't dry out your hair. You can also use it on your face too, I heard. Um, is that correct, Adeline? So you can use it like everywhere. Cabin fever can be used as a body wash, a face wash, and a shampoo. And then when you get out, you can put um, beard oil or blush beauty oil um, on the ends of your dry, dry hair here. That's why I haven't dyed any of this, you guys, because I'm waiting for, all, for my hair to grow out just a little bit longer, and I'm cutting off all of my over-processed hair and starting over from scratch. This is all my natural, healthy hair right here. Um, 
Okay, so we don't have any more questions. How'd you guys like that takedown? Cabin fever is a good bubble bath too. I used it for that as well. Um, yeah, there was just uh, one day where I used cabin fever for like everything because I wanted to try it. So um, it is really gentle, but it manages to clean so well. Um, and I really like this smell. It's really relaxing. All right. So if you are watching the replay, let me know your thoughts on this video. Maybe suggest what you want me to take down next. Break apart the ingredients list to a sabbatical beauty dupe. Um, stuff I have in store for the future is marine serum. I am so excited. I can't wait for that one. But I'm waiting till all the spring box uh, frenzy dies down a little bit. So plans for the future is marine serum. And... Uh, had another one I forgot what the other one is but marine serum is probably gonna be my next takedown um, and yeah if you have any suggestions please leave some in the comments and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and I'll answer them as they come uh, please add your friends to this group if you think they need help with their skincare if they are just drowning in $300 creams and serums that don't work um, please invite them to join our group so we can guide them in the right direction. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, please like this video and subscribe and share, share, share. Sharing is caring. We have so many great videos on our channel, um, and I'm in a lot of them. Um, but we also have great reviewers like um, all of our spring box reviewers. We've had past um, winter box reviewers. We have uh, people who regularly post in the community that are just full of information, like everybody in the community is so bright and enthusiastic and we all love the products and um, I never really knew what brand loyalty really meant until I found Sabbatical Beauty. At first, you know, I thought, oh yeah, I like uh, such and such. Let me get their bumper sticker and put it on my a water bottle and you know it it's just because you want people to see that logo well you know what brand loyalty real brand loyalty is something you feel in here it's something that you believe in it's something that you actually have no qualms about spending your money on because you know that you are getting the best quality and you don't have to compromise anything um, just like with the takedown that I did today you don't have to compromise um, ingredients just because all the other products out there have it you know what this product doesn't have all that crap in it so there is no compromising going on here all right I'm gonna go and finish dinner you guys have a good night thank you for watching and my very last spring box review will be on Sunday oh and also um, on the description to this video um, on the Facebook page. There is a link to the Stop Paying for Overpriced Cosmetics webinar that Alan will be hosting. It's a three-part uh, webinar, so please sign up because spots are limited. It is very, very much worth it. As much as I know about skincare, I am going to attend the webinar because there's still so much I don't know about skincare. It's like a rabbit hole, guys, so um, take some time out, take, your, take some notes, um, get in on this webinar um, and just like spread your knowledge to everyone you know because um, it really makes me sad when I think about how many people spend money on things that aren't even good for them. All right, good night, guys.